Hi, welcome to my channel, Takoyaki Tarot. Um, today is March 7th, 2023, 6.24 a.m. So it's super early, okay? But I wanted to get this out um, because I figured out... <clears throat> I figured out the dream. I want to talk about a dream that I had, I guess, early this morning, okay? But um, before I do that, I just want to remind anyone that's watching that these messages are not going to resonate with everyone. If they resonate with you, great, and gives you clarity, great. If it doesn't, that's okay. Don't force it to be your story. Don't make it yours, all right? Um, that seems to be a common problem. People want to be he it's like people want to be heard and seen so bad that they will make something that does not resonate resonate with them all right you got to stop doing that because you're just creating problems for yourself that never existed or that aren't for you all right um so relax all right um aside from that I pray to God and call upon Archangel Michael and any ancestors, angels, and spirits of the highest white light that love me unconditionally to continue to protect me and my family during this time. Please help us see things clearly and to help us remove the fog of illusion that has led us down a false path in the past. Amen. All right. So, um, we're, okay. So I had a dream, I guess this morning, right? Um, I was in a, a church. And it was actually the same church that I used to go to as a little girl. Um, I grew up Pentecostal, which is like extremely strict, right? Um, a for, it's like a strict form of Christian Christianity. But um, anyways, um, so it was, I was in that church, that building, right? That I grew up in. And I remember it was crowded. Like, it was filled. Like, all the church pews were, like, filled. And um, I remember I was sitting next to my parents and my sibling. And I remember it was kind of like, um, I don't know, like, it was like at first, like, I was just like, everybody, everybody's staring at the altar, right? Because that's where, like, the preacher is, like, preaching and talking, right? But, um. Everyone's kind of like, just, they have their heads turned to the altar. They're just, you know, looking at the altar, listening to the preacher talk. And it's kind of like, I just like snapped out of it. And then I'm like looking around. And like, I'm, it feels like I'm like the only one that's looking around at everybody else. Like everybody else is watching the preacher talk, but I'm like looking around, right? It's kind of like everybody was stuck watching the preacher. Like they were um like hypnotized in a sense right and my mom she had in, in the dream she had um a, the bible open and i remember i saw a specific passage in my dream and this happens a lot but so anyways i looked up the passage right um and the passage was it was um songs but it was songs of solomon 6 through 8 right and I remember I, in the dream, I kept hearing in my head, Songs of Solomon 6, 8, 6, 8, 6, 8, Songs of Solomon 6, 8, right? So I obviously, I woke up and I looked through it. And basically, the passage is about um, the man is proclaiming in the passage that however many other women of whatever status there may be, um, his beloved is still by far the best, right? So... That's what that passage really is about. So Songs of Solomon 6 through 8. It's about like a, basically a man saying that like um, no matter how many how many other women in the world or however money they have or how, whatever status they have, you don't compare, right? You're or They don't compare to you. You're like the only one for me, right? So that's interesting because um, everybody is staring at the altar and then the preacher, he's like preaching like a, about God or whatever he's preaching about, right? And I'm saying whatever because the preacher in my dream was like a false priest or preacher. And the reason why I'm saying this is because this man is falling from grace or he fell from grace. And I'll tell you why, because keep in mind, when I said everybody, everybody was like hypnotized watching the altar, right, where he was preaching, Right. And I'm like the only one that's looking around. It's like nobody 
can like wake up or something. And behind him, uh, well, in the church that I grew up, it's like this. It's like there's like um, stages upon stages. There's like different levels to the stages. And then there's like the altar, like the podium. So the, the preacher was talking on the podium, but um, he wasn't really on the altar, like the stage altar. He was just, the podium is like always off of the stage, right? Um, so he's preaching and then he's, he's also walking around while preaching, but then the lights on the altar, they all turn off. Um, and there's like three levels to the stage and then like one by one, they're all turning off. But all the other lights in the church, they're on. And I'm looking around because nobody is noticing this. Nobody is noticing that the lights from the altar had turned off. And this man is like, he's like preaching and he's like so into it. But it's like what he's saying is not matching up with like his faith or how he really feels or who he really is, right? It's kind of like God is like, um, he just turned off his light or something like that. Like he turned off his light like, he fell from grace. He's not who he is appearing to be. And nobody can see this, right? Because I'm like, is nobody else noticing that the lights of the altar have turned off? Nobody sees this? So the reason why I'm talking about this dream is because the somebody, they have such a very high standard and i've been picking this man up in my reading i've been picking him up a lot whether this is a, a preacher um a teacher a, a policeman whoever this man is he's somebody where um people are focused on more on what he's saying than who he really is right nobody's looking behind him at the altar at the lights that have turned off nobody is looking that this man has fallen or is falling from grace right they're like hypnotized by his words. Um, this same man, he's like a false person in society, which is interesting because this same man, he sees you as his beloved. Like, but the thing is, he's unworthy of your love because in the in the passage, I read through it the entire passage, and he's like describing like her hair, her lips, her thighs, her breast, like. He's just talking about like all the things that he just like wants to be and do with her and like how she's just so perfect in every way. Like this is how he really feels, but he's like hypnotizing society and like just preaching and preaching. But secretly, this man sees you as his one and only, which is interesting because you're sitting here talking about Whatever it is that you're talking about, this man could even be like downplaying you and the community or society downplaying you, talking about you a certain way, but secretly this man is like in love with you, right? And while this man is secretly in love with you, he's downplaying you publicly. So people are paying attention to his words so that way they can't really be like, oh, they're like hypnotized by what he's saying, either if it's just in general or if it's about you so that way they can't ever be like, oh no, he loves her. You know, he wants to be with her, right? And, and a lot of it has to do like, this man, he's not a good man. He fell. He's a he's beyond a karmic masculine, right? And it's crazy because this karmic masculine who fell, who's been hypnotizing society with the words that he's been saying so people would never question who he really is, which is all the lights turning off, right? God took away his light. It's like he didn't deserve his light. He was abusing his light. Right, because he was like preaching and preaching and preaching, but the everybody in the pews they were hypnotized. Right, it's not like people were like talking back or like saying hallelujah or saying amen or no. Everybody was just hypnotized and stuck. So he was like abused the power he had in society to hypnotize the community. Meanwhile, so nobody would question him. Nobody would um, like ask him anything. Nobody would step out of line in a sense. But meanwhile, this man thinks that you're his beloved. He was abusing his power and God took it away. And, and it's like, this is something that can't be seen because this power that he was using, it, it may not be like a, a tangible, 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 tangible power. It could be like um, charm or charisma or something, but he can't be charming anymore. He can't be charismatic anymore. 
Um, he can't use his words anymore. So anyways, I wanted to talk about that. Um, but it's the same man, the same man. I've been picking this up. This man who has a, he's worked hard on his image, you know, because preachers, you know, they tend to have like a, a reputation where they're upstanding citizens in society, very God fearing, very, um, you know, good, loyal people of faith, right? So when a preacher, a preacher talks, you, of course you want to listen to a preacher because they're connected to God. And I'm doing this because there are a lot of phony people in society that abuse their position. So this person may or may not be an actual preacher in real life, but the whole point was that whoever this man was, he's been abusing his the position that he was given by God. And he abused it to the point where he was even downplaying you and taking for granted what God had given him. So now God took it away, which is interesting because this is like the third time I've talked about this particular dream about the star. Um, I had a dream, I think back in November about a falling star, a star I saw, I was, I was watching, I was up in the sky and I could see all 50 states, right? It was like a map and it was like green and like I saw mountains and like, you know, how a, a very detailed map would look, but I was in the sky watching the map and I could see a star from the sky fall. And I think it fell uh, in Tennessee. If I'm not mistaken, that's the state where the star fell. It, I, it's in my book, but I'm not going to go into that right now because I don't want to take up more time. But I mean, I, this is the same person. This person, he was a star in a sense in society, like very, he had a good reputation. He was looked up. Um, people looked up to him, blah, 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 blah respected. But then he fell. So, um, yeah, that's really what I wanted to talk about. All right, so. Okay, wow, well, that's good. Oh, um, I have two slots left open, 1233. I have two slots left open for free... 10 minute reading okay so if you feel like you need a, a 10 minute reading for free um send me an email because i have two slots left open and once those slots get filled up i'm not going to do this again until april i'm going to try and do this every month or so until i don't feel like doing it because i was going to do the love readings for the rest of the zodiac signs and then i just didn't feel like doing it so i didn't do them but i might do a couple more love readings for March. Um, there's, I think, I think I only did like maybe six love readings or four love readings. Um, I did Scorpio, Cancer, Libra. I gotta check, but um, yeah, I may do a couple more this month. For love reading I just don't really like doing them like I don't feel like like I don't mind doing them it's just they're, they're so long and in-depth and it's just like draining so but I don't know I'll think about it I guess Anyways, the gift in reverse. Yeah, whoever this man is, his gifts are being taken away from him. He's been abusing them. That's like God giving you the, the gift of sight, right? However, you're using that to win lotteries and scratch tickets and all that shit, right? You're abusing that power. So if you're abusing the power, the gift that God himself gave you, or herself, right? The God itself 
God itself gave you this gift and you're abusing it, you're not using it the way you're supposed to be using it. So in God's eyes, it's like, so what's the point of you having this gift? I might as well just take it away because this gift is not making you, it's not turning you into a better person. In fact, it's making you into a worse person. You're given into the demons of the earth with this gift, right? So this person, they, they have their gifts being taken away. This is like a false preacher or they just preach like fake shit in society. Like they just, um, this is somebody who, for example, this is going to be an example. This is, this is like somebody saying, oh, families should be a mother and a father. This is this, all right. Cause in the dream, it was, it was a man, right? So this would be a man being like, oh yes, family should be a mother and a father, but come to find out this man is secretly gay, right? Like whatever they're saying in society does not match up to who they really are. And on top of that, they don't, they don't have those gifts anymore, but they're still preaching and talking like they still have these gifts. It could be like, um, they can't bring things into fruition. They cannot manifest. They don't have that gift. They lost it because when they were able to manifest, they just abused it. And it, it's funny because whoever this man is, it's like this man is like going through so many battles. And on top of that, this man is secretly in love with you. Like he's, he's in love with you. There's, what is the gap between that passage and him preaching? There's a gap. Oh shit. You were the gift collective. So you could have been what he was abusing or like not, and I don't know if it was like domestic or anything like that, but um, it's like God gave you, it's like you were a gift to this man and he like knew that, but he took it, he took it for granted, took advantage of it, didn't use it properly, didn't like. Um, nurture the gift and protect this gift. He didn't do what he was supposed to with this gift. And meanwhile, he's over here saying like to society, like, oh yeah, I don't need the collective. The collective is this, the collective is that. The collective did this, the collective did that. And because of what they're saying, it's hypnotizing society, the communities. It's hypnotizing people and nobody is paying attention to what's really going on, which is that this man has fallen from grace and his gifts have been taken away from him. So he's trying to hypnotize the community so nobody questions him, nobody looks behind him, nobody sees that he's the one that lost a gift. You being that gift. It's like God handed you to this man as a gift to be a better person. And no, did not happen. So God is like, all right, well, if you're not going to appreciate the collective, if you're not going to nurture, protect, and, you know, be better with this gift then what's the point of you having this gift? God took it away. God took you away from this person. And you could be elsewhere living your life. You were the gift. And this man, it's funny because this man, like, um, <laughs> um, False person reverse. I feel like this man was preaching to the world about, it's kind of like throwing your voice. This man was like the collective this, the collective that, the collective this, the collective that. But come to find out, you know, this God took away the gift because you're not a false person. I feel like this man right now is trying his hardest, like with every fiber in his being. Like, you know how when a preacher is, is preaching the word of God and he's like so into it, right? I feel like this man is using every fiber in his being to try and hypnotize 
the community, um, people, friends, family. I feel like he's trying to use every fiber of his being to like convince people not to see him for who he really is. It's like, if you listen to my voice, if you listen to what I'm saying, like you don't have time to like see what's really going on. And it was crazy because I'm like, is nobody else seeing that the lights are turning off on the altar? Like altars, even in churches, altars are sacred spaces. Like you don't, like the kids can run around all they want on the floor, but as soon as a kid tries to climb up on the altar, you have the parents going, ah, ah, right? Because altars are sacred spaces. And here, the lights on this sacred space has been turned off. They were being turned off one by one by one. There was like three lights and they, all the layers got turned off one by one. Like nobody is seeing this, but everyone was still hyper-focused. It's like nobody was paying attention to it. I also feel like society, they, part of society, they don't want to see what's really going on. But that's another thing. I guess that's it. Great fortune reverse. So this man lost a gift and his great fortune. This could be a preacher, but this could also just be somebody that relies on their reputation and like the power that they had it's kind of like this person had natural crap <laughs> not natural crap my um i was getting like clogged up right here it's like this man could have been born with like a, a natural ability to like lead or a, a natural gift to where people just want to be drawn to him and that was in itself a gift but he abused that gift right um so that's something that he lost um, a gift, you could have, the gift, you were also this gift that he lost, he abused. He has no money, no happiness, no joy, no great fortune. So he has no gift and no great fortune. So there's a third thing because there were three lights that went off. The gift in reverse, great fortune in reverse. Let's see if the third one comes out, but we'll find out. Unexpected income. I feel like that goes with false person in reverse. So meanwhile, as this man is losing things, as God is taking things away from this man, you are gaining things. And who you really are is coming to life, that you are, in fact, a real genuine person. Right? And your finances are getting better. Meanwhile, this man who has been trying to hypnotize the community with his words so people don't see him for who he really is and see what's really going on. I feel like also this man, he's trying so hard to preach and preach and preach so nobody sees that he, in fact, has nothing, right? I feel like this man is the type of piece, uh, the type of person to be like, Oh yeah, look at me. My life is so good. My life is so good. And then nobody questions it. So people are just like, oh yeah, his life is so good. His life is so good. Right? But nobody's really questioning. Like nobody's really like, if your life is so good, why is X, Y, Z, you know? The X, Y, Z is that he doesn't have any gifts. He doesn't have any great fortune. Right? Oh, I feel like this man could, was also saying that he had um, gifts from God, like uh, Claire's or something like that. He doesn't, all right? So he's been using his words to hypnotize the community or to like have the community think that he does have gifts, but um, he really doesn't. He doesn't want people to question that. 
And here you are being a real genuine person and having unexpected income. House reverse. So this man lost a gift. That's the first light. Great fortune in reverse. That's the second light. And then house in reverse. That's the third light. So he's losing gifts, he's losing great fortunes, and he's losing a house. So he's losing everything. And here you are, you were being real the whole entire time, right? He was like preaching to the community that the collective was this, this, and that. But you were just being real the entire time. And now you're coming into unexpected income. Your finances are getting better. Which is another thing too. I feel like that's why I keep saying, like, I feel like the, uh, the community, they don't want to see this too. Some of them don't want to wake up. Because they don't want to be like, because a lot of the people in the community, um, whatever this man was saying about you, a lot of people in the community could have been so quick to jump on the bandwagon because they already have their own feelings about you or their demons felt a certain way about you or whatever the case may be. So they were so quick to jump on this bandwagon. Like, yeah, 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 the collective this, the collective that. But come to find out, this man, he's losing things one by one. A gift, great fortune, and a house. He's losing things. And sometimes... People want to stay in denial because they don't want to see, like, the mess that they've also been involved in. So I feel like people, now that the truth is coming out, people are still choosing to be in denial. Even though it's right in their face. It's like your life versus their life and your life speaks for itself and their life speaks for itself. I mean, and it's crazy because this man wanted his words to speak for his life, but his life is overshadowing overshadowing what his words are saying his words do not match up with his life meanwhile you haven't even been saying anything and your life is just your life right you've been real person this entire time and your life speaks for itself you don't have to speak upon your life and i've said this before you don't have to speak upon your life because your life shows itself for what it is meanwhile this man was speaking over his life trying to make it, his life seem that something it was not but his life is speaking for itself like you can't you can't say, oh, I have this position in my job, right? But come to find out you're just like a cashier at Target. And people are just like, oh, but you just said you owned Target. But come to find out you're just a cashier at Target. It's, it's like that. Message of concern in reverse. Whatever messages that you're getting, like from the, I feel like somebody wants to bring you a message of concern, but you're not even worried about it. Whatever message you get, you're just like, okay, it is what it is, okay. It's like concern, ah, what the, wow. Wow. It's like whatever, it's like the concern card in reverse. Oh my God, my throat's getting really, really dry all of a sudden. Whatever messages that you hear about this man losing his great fortune, his gift, his house, you don't care, right? It's like this man wants you to know, hey, I'm losing everything in my life. Okay, what do you want me to do about it? Well, I'm in love with you, okay? What do you want me to do about that? I don't care. Like, weren't you just telling everybody that you don't like me, you don't love me, I did this, I did that, my life is this, my life is that? Also, I feel like this man was telling people that you have no gifts, you have no great fortune, you have no home. But come to find out, it's in the reverse. And people, a lot of people in the community feel very, very foolish because... They were so quick to jump on this bandwagon just because of how they felt about you originally. It kind of just like fueled it. So it's kind of like if you don't like cauliflower and then somebody's like, oh, I don't like cauliflower. And you're like, yeah, I don't like cauliflower either. Let's stop cooking cauliflower. Let's stop baking with cauliflower. And this man was like, from now on, cauliflower is banned. From now on, we're not going to cook with cauliflower. From now on, cauliflower, if you like cauliflower, then this means that you're this, 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 this. And everybody, because they already don't like cauliflower, they're just like, yes, yes, that's right. Come to find out, cauliflower is actually very delicious and it's very, you know, tasty. And there's so many ways that you can cook with it, right? But these people, they're just like, cauliflower is so bland and boring. And then somebody else on the outside, they're just like, but you can do X, Y, Z with cauliflower. You can cook X, Y, Z. You can do this. You can do that. But... They don't want to see it that way. They want to be so stuck in that way of cauliflower is bland and boring and you can't do anything with it. But meanwhile, there's so many recipes and photos and there's evidence on all the multiple ways that you can cook and make cauliflower. There's evidence of this. There's evidence of your life and there's evidence of this man's life. 
But for some reason, there are people in the community that still want to believe like the lies. They still want to believe that you cannot do anything with cauliflower. But meanwhile, cauliflower is so versatile, you can do so much with it to the point where you can flip it and turn it into a business, right? If you want to make toasted cauliflower with dipped garlic butter and you want to sell that, boom, you got yourself a business. But because this man has been so trying to tell the community, you cannot do anything with cauliflower because cauliflower is bland and it's gross. But come to find out if that's the case and how come you're making a business? How come you're making a profit? How come you're making a living off of selling cauliflower? You know what I'm saying? Like that's the best analogy that I can use for this. Like your life speaks for itself and this man's life speaks for itself. But there are some people that still don't want to see it because the same people that were so quick to jump on this bandwagon are the same people that already had a negative feeling about you in the first place. It doesn't matter if they're your coworkers that you've worked with for 20 years. It doesn't matter if they are your friends that you've known for 20 years. They're, it doesn't matter if it's family, your neighbors that you've known for the longest. It doesn't matter. You got to ask yourself, if these are really my people, why were they so quick to believe what this man was saying? Why? Well, because these people already had a feeling about you in the beginning. They already felt something about you. So they needed something negative to kind of like, so that way they can be like, yes, I knew it. I knew it. It's like they wanted to be so right about you in the, in the, in the worst ways possible. It's like they needed it. They needed someone to talk bad about you so that way they can feel like, um, not entitled, but that way they can, it was kind of like somebody gave them the okay, the green light to talk negatively about you in an open, safe space, right? which is, it's very weird. It's like they wanted to be able to openly hate you, but because of the relationship you had with these people, they couldn't, right? They had to hide it. But it doesn't even matter, which is crazy because a lot of these people, they were all sitting in a church pew. So these could be Christians that, what the heck? My throat. These could be Christians. So this could be like one of those Christian readings like if you grew up very religious, like, um, so if you grew up very religious and you've always known that your family or your friends or your church goers, your fellow church goers felt a certain way about you. And then this reading is resonate. Like you're in the situation where a man or it could be a woman was talking negatively about you for whatever reason, but you know that this person is secretly in love with you. And then <laughs> this is like so specific. And then everybody in the community are so quick to jump on this hate bandwagon, right? And just because they already felt a certain way about you. Like, if this resonates with you, you would know. Because this is quite specific. And it's funny because, believe it or not, religious people are, there, are, are, religious people are one of the first ones to hate on something. Right? It's true. It's true. Christians... They're always quick to hate something, whether it's a different religion, a different lifestyle. It's, you know, people that look a certain way or, you know, same sex marriages or whatever. It's, it's Christians that really give Christians a bad name. Can you believe that? Christians themselves give other Christians bad names because of the way they act. And they're, they Christians, they tend to have a lot of hatred. And I'm not trying to say that all Christians are bad because that's not true. All right. I've met some quite lovely Christians that are really kind and you know, that's like saying, you know, one zodiac sign is bad. That's not true. There's good Christians and then there's bad Christians. There's good and bad and everything. But you would know if this resonates. I mean, let me get, wow. Loyal and reverse. Um, This man was supposed to be loyal to you. But it's like, whoever this man was, he, he went against his own feelings for you. It's like, he, he doesn't, if he can't even be loyal to his own feelings about you, how can you expect him to be loyal to anything? It's kind of like, it, it doesn't make sense. This man has no loyalty to God, to faith, and God knows that. It's like this man is preaching one thing, but behind the scenes, he's doing something else. So that's why God has taken away his gifts, his great fortune, and his house. Because he has no sense of loyalty. He doesn't. 
There's no sense of loyalty in this man. It's like if you're God is like if you're not loyal to me, if you're not loyal to God, you're loyal to the earth. This man put more work into his earthly matters than, you know, into God. God is like, if you're not loyal to me, then why am I blessing you? Wow. Honest. That is crazy. Because it's crazy because we have loyalty in reverse and all of these cards are in reverse. House reverse. Great fortune reverse. Gifts reverse. And then we have... False person reverse, unexpected income, and an honesty. You've been real and genuine this entire time. And that's another thing too. People who already felt a certain way about you, they want to believe so bad that you're just a fake person, that you're just dishonest, that you're unloyal, la 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 la, whatever the case may be. It's because of how, I don't know, who they are or how they are. It really also <clears throat> has to do with the reading that I did last night. Like your family did not deserve, <sighs> your family did not think that you deserve to be happy because of the way you looked. If you if haven't seen that reading, go check it out because I did that reading last night. Um, So this would be like that. Like because of the way you looked, people wanted to see you under a certain light. But come to find out you were nothing but an honest person this entire time. You were nothing but a genuine, real person this entire time. And this is God blessing you, right? Pulling you out of the gutters. That's God doing that. And then this man, <clears throat> he's been lying and disloyal and dishonest, which is crazy. And I feel like that's why people were so quick to believe this because in my dream, this man was a preacher. And again, preachers tend to have a certain stature in the community, right? Very honest, God-fearing man, um, family man, very loyal, right? This man has no sense of loyalty. My throat's getting like really, really dry. I'm also kind of tired too, um, but I just felt like I had to do this reading. It's really early. Hmm. 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 On the bottom, we have choices forbidden and understanding. I feel like the choices that you have been making in, oh, in your life. Oh my God, I felt amazing. The choices that you have been making in your life. Um, it's like they're... People won't normally make those choices. Like you just make different choices in your life. And a lot of people would consider these choices like forbidden or we shouldn't do that or we shouldn't say this or we shouldn't dress like this or we shouldn't look like that, right? But you just do whatever you want to do even though people see it as it's like it's forbidden. <laughs> Which is crazy because you have a vast understanding with understanding and vision like your choices, it's like people don't do X, Y, Z because they think it's like forbidden or because their mom told them not to or their dad or society or their church tells them you can't do something, right? But it's not like it's a bad thing. Like, <sighs> all right, let me give you an example. Um, Growing up Pentecostal, it's like a strict form of Christianity, right? And women could not cut their hair. Women could not wear pants, could not get their nails done, could not wear makeup, right? Um, they see it as like bad and like that's just something you don't do, right? But then, for example, there's another woman who comes to church and she always cuts her hair. She wears pants to church. She wears makeup. She has her nails done. She wears earrings. Meanwhile, they're just like, oh, my God, that's so bad. You can't do that. You can't do that. So they want to feel a certain way about her immediately because they feel like they can't do X, Y, Z or they don't do X, Y, Z. So what does that say? Immediately off the bat, they want to feel a certain way about her, right? But they can't do it openly because they're Christian, so they need to appear love and light. But here comes this man out of nowhere, 
he starts preaching how women should do this and women should do that. So then you have all of these women that already felt some type of way about the woman who wears pants in church and like, yeah, 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 women should do this and blah, 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 blah. Let's excommunicate this one woman who wears pants in church, right? But you have a bigger understanding. You know that your purpose with vision, it's, it's bigger than who cares about who's wearing church and pants. It doesn't matter who's wearing church and pants. You're all there to worship the same God. So that's all that matters, right? With your understanding, you know what's really more important. Meanwhile, these people, they want to be petty and fight over like the dumbest shit ever. And it doesn't even bother you because you're being real. You're being your genuine self. You could, ne you could not even like skirts. You, you just feel comfortable in pants, right? Like you, you just know that whatever they're arguing, whatever they're talking about, whatever they're saying, it doesn't matter. Because with a vision and understanding, you just know that you're only here for God. That's it. It doesn't matter. Whatever they want to do is whatever they want to do. <laughs> and we have differences in reverse. Like, you're all worshiping the same God, so it, why does it matter if I'm wearing pants in church? Are we not here for the same God? Are we all worshiping the Most High? So why are you guys, you guys are being false. They're over here being more focused on someone's appearance than worshiping the same God. Like, if you're going to come to church to gossip, then why come to church? Letting go in reverse because they can't let go of that toxic narcissism shit. They want to gossip in church about the woman in church. Like, what? Makes no sense. Anyways. Um, let's move on. That's why it's so funny to me. That's why I said Christians give Christians a bad name. All right. And I speak from experience because I grew up around nothing but Christians. Real, I can, I, I can, all right, let me put it like this. I can tell the difference between a false Christian and a genuine Christian immediately, immediately. You put 10 people in front of me that claim they are Christians, I can tell you who's who and who's not. Like, that's how, like... But it's so crazy because I'm the only one that's looking around and everybody in the church was like hypnotized, more focused on what this man was saying than who he really was, right? And I'm just like, is nobody else seeing that the lights are being turned off at the altar, 4244, and nobody is seeing what's really going on. And I hate to break it to you, but a lot of the times, even though when people have the truth in front of them, they still don't want to believe it because they just want to really, it's like with all of their being, they want to believe the worst, right? Because it makes them feel good. It's like they revel in it. As long as somebody is has a, a better, they look worse than them. And I feel like sometimes when I grew up in the in like church and all that stuff like that, I always got the feeling that everyone was like in secret competition with each other all the time. Every time I went to church, I always felt like people were, there were like special cliques and different cliques and like they're, those who had seniority were like the mean girls, you know what I mean? Those who had, those were, who just went, and I can tell too the difference between like Christians, people who were, who went to church for like for the very first time versus people who went to the, people who went to church for the very first time, but they automatically gained seniority because they were related to X, Y, Z or whatever the case it is, right? Like um, nepotism, favoritism, special privilege, right? But if you were a newbie who went to the church and you had no connections, that you were like the outcast, you had to like earn your way and, you know, kiss ass to get your way to the top and respect. And you had to like kiss ass to like the other women in the church, right? Whose men were like the the bosses or like, you know, it's, I'm telling you, there are, it's, I always got the feeling, even as a little girl, <laughs> you were meant to shine. I always got the feeling as, even as a little girl that, um, well, at least in the church that I grew up in, that church was just like one big, like popularity contest, right? It, it was just so funny to me how that happened. Spirit baby. So uh, these cards are coming out from yesterday's reading. I should shuffle them better, but um, 
Let me do that again because that was like not a good shuffle, I feel like. But anyways, so yeah, so these could have been like the popular people in your in your job, in your family, in your community, in your church, or whatever. And because you were somebody who was seen as an outsider, they were just so quick to believe whatever this man was saying about you. Because they already had some type of feeling about you. So they wanted to believe it, right? And now that the real truth is in front of their face, it's kind of like they're acting like they, what truth? What? What, what happened? What truth? What happened? Right? It's like that. Oh my God. New karmic cycle. I feel like whoever this man is, he's going to be house hopping, right? He, he doesn't have a stable home. Your past doesn't define you. This is, this is another thing too that I, um, that bothers me about Christians is that, um, you could have lived a certain lifestyle and then all of a sudden you want to go back to church, but then like the fact that you're going back to church or the fact that you're whatever it is, it isn't. The reason why I keep using church a lot in my video today is because that was the dream that it was based on, right? But realistically, it could be any organization. It could be a job. It could be a family. It could be um, school, okay? Because if my dream was about a school, I would be talking about school, right? So, you know, jot that down. But let's say you're, you know, like you could go back to school, right? It doesn't matter how old you are, but you decide to go back to church or you go back to school. and But... Then you have your classmates or your other churchgoers and they're judging you because of the way you looked or because of the lack of knowledge that you have. And it's just like, you should be happy that somebody else is walking and having faith in God, right? But instead, you're judging them based on their past. Like with school, you should be happy that somebody else wants to go back to school and gain more knowledge. But instead, you're judging them on the lack of knowledge that they have. Look at that. I secretly love you. And in the man, the passage, it was Songs of Solomon 6 through 8. Look it up. Songs of Solomon 6 through 8, verse 6 through 8. And it's literally about a man just proclaiming his love. Like he was just talking about like her lips, her hair, her touch. Just like how she's just like the perfect woman in his eyes. But it's so funny because meanwhile, this man is secretly in love with you. It's because of the way you look. This is what I'm talking about. He's not loyal to his feelings. And God is like, if you're not loyal to your own feelings, how can you be loyal to me? If you're not loyal to me, why am I blessing you? And that's another thing too. It was the, the way you looked. So this man could not openly love you for whatever reason because of the way you looked. The way you looked really had him speaking about you in such a negative way. Meanwhile, he's secretly in love with you. And that's crazy because at this point, if he comes up to you, be like, hey, I'm secretly in love with you. You're just like, what? Weren't you just talking to me? Or weren't you just talking about me for like my entire life? And now you secretly love me? What am I going to do with that? That's tainted love right there. That's dirty. I don't want that. What am I going to do with that? That's, that's. <clears throat> my mother slash sister made me do it. So this person could be this way because this is somebody who's like, I don't know, a mama's boy or, you know, it's kind of like <clears throat> my sister older. <sighs> Hold on, my throat, man. It's like my older sister knows what's best for me. My mother knows what's best for me. It's like they listen to the words of toxic people than listening to God. Come to find out they destroyed their life like that. Because now look, they have no gifts, no great fortune, and no house. And they're just constantly opening up new karmic cycles, house hopping. Right? They have no stability. And they secretly love you. But because of, you know, oh... It was the way you looked to their mother or their sister. You didn't fit the image. Like you, you weren't the, the, like the perfect girl image. 
for their mother or their sister or maybe both of them, you didn't look like the kind of person that they wanted their son to be with. And because of that, meanwhile, this man was secretly in love with you. Like, and this was like an undying love. Like, if you read Songs of Solomon, um, verse six to, six to eight, like, this man was, like, I'm telling you, like, beyond in love. Like, it doesn't matter how many women threw themselves at him, their status, their money, the way they looked. Like, you were it for this man. But because you did not fit the perfect image that his sister had for him or his mother had for him, it's like he couldn't openly love you. And so that way nobody would, his, so that way, his, so that his sister and his mom would never question him, he openly talked bad about you. That is a shame. This is like one of those like Hallmark movies. But in the end, the woman ends up marrying somebody else and finds true love. And then, you know, in the end of those movies, this man is like crying and he just spends the rest of his days at the bar with his head slumped like that. You know, that's so funny. I mean, I think it's funny because like God was over here telling him like, listen, you're able to have this gift, this great fortune in this house, but you got to protect this, this, but, I'm, but in order to get this, this is what you're going to have to like be a real person or be with this real person or be honest about your, uh, honest about your feelings about this real person. But he didn't want to do that. Right? He didn't want to do that. Oh, well. Right? Mm. My phone just bugged, too. It's like the universe was like, yeah, oh, well. <laughs> the heavens will shake. Yeah. I feel like this man is not, I don't want to say being punished. But this is just uh, a consequence of his actions, right? It's kind of like the heavens was like, we gave you the perfect gift. Wow, you have the healing touch. We gave you the perfect gift, and this is what you did to it. So now this is a consequence of your actions by listening to this mother slash sister. You were the gift. You were the one that was going to bring great fortune in this man's life. You were the one that was going to have a dream house with this man or um, have him able, being able to provide a dream house. Like you were the key to all of this. You were a real person that has a healing touch. You were the one. It's like you were the key for unexpected income. You were the key. It's like you were the secret ingredients to have an unexpected income, which would lead to gifts of great fortune and a house. It's like you have the ability to heal anything. <coughs> wow. Sorry about that. But my throat is like really scratchy now. Yeah. This is really, um, I don't even know, honestly, because it's just so crazy how this person literally threw away a whole destiny that could have been. At one point, this was his destiny to be with you. And the two of you were supposed to combine your powers together and create an empire in a sense, right? The both of you were supposed to create an empire. But because he never followed through on his end, God removed him and was like, all right, that's not a problem. We'll just give you something else or we'll just give you someone else, right? And don't think for once that just because this person was part of your destiny at one point, that this was your only destiny. Because if you are a chosen one and I mean, let's say the other person, they don't fall through on their promises to God or they don't walk into their purpose, God will just bring somebody else into your life, all right? God has an abundance. It's like, okay, well, this person didn't work out. That's fine. Here's, here's another person. Okay, they're not working out. Here's another person. God is going to make sure that you fulfill your part of your purpose. And just because this person does not and could not and will not, it's too late for them. So you could be fulfilling your purpose with somebody else or you're about to be fulfilling your purpose with somebody else. So just because God, this man, he took this gift for granted being you, God's like, all right, that's not a problem because I have somebody else for you. All right, that's not a problem because I have somebody else for you. So 
So this is why you should never get hung up on the past because the past already happened. It is what it is. Trust and believe that there's love out there, all right? Like... <clears throat> the fool. Look at that. The fool. This person, um, I'm getting two things from this. This person now, all of a sudden, they want to take a leap of faith, right? And now they want to express their undying love to you. Now, after everything that they've done to you behind the scenes and to your face and behind your back and to the community, now it's like, I'm ready to be in love. Please love me. What? No. Love you? No. But it doesn't even matter. The second thing that I'm getting is that you, Collective, you've taken a leap of faith elsewhere. And what it seems is going in your favor. Right? You were just honest with yourself. You were honest with God. You always remained a true and faithful, honest, loyal person, very genuine, which has allowed you to remain within this healing, abundant energy, right? We have, you have the healing touch and unexpected income. So you're, you can, if you want to take a leap of faith, you can, if you want to take, if you want to have a second chance, you can, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, you can. So this may have been your first chance at love, but it doesn't matter because you're always able to have another chance and another chance and another chance. The reason why I feel the fool card is the most powerful in tarot is because when the fool card comes out, it represents being able to have a brand new beginning by taking that leap of faith with God and yourself. So you took a leap of faith and now you have another chance and another chance. This person, they want to do that with you, but they can't because they are stuck in a new karmic cycle. They can't, they can't. They see you taking a new leap of faith and they're like, well, I'm ready to love now. You want to take another leap of faith with me? You want to give it another go? Want to try again? No. I, no. I've seen what you've been doing. I know what you have done. You're dirty. You're tainted. I don't want you touching me. I don't want you around me. I'm not healing you. You're wrapped up in karmic debt after death. Death? Wow. My um my right cheek is like um icy hot. There could be a karmic death happening. This man could be so down in the dumps because you don't want to take a second chance with him. <clears throat> Excuse me. I tell you my throat is scratchy that he may drink himself, you know, down. So he's probably drinking his feelings every night. Um, his liver, something with his liver. His liver could be getting shut down. <sighs> Boy. The hanged man. Yeah. You're just having constant leap of faith. You're going within yourself. You're spiritually enlightened. Nothing's holding you back. <laughs> Page of Wands. I'm getting nothing but good news. This is all your energy now. False person reversed. Honesty, unexpected income. Your past doesn't define you. The healing touch. You knew that your past doesn't define you, so it's okay for you to take these leap of faith. I feel like this person was trying to, because their mom, sister saw you in a certain way, that's what they were telling the community. Oh yeah, the collective is this and this and this and this and this and this and this. But they were talking about your past. They were not talking about who you are now. And you know that your past doesn't define you. So who you are now, like you don't even care about the past, which is allowing you to take these constant leap of faith, being more spiritually tapped in, you're making sacrifices, right? It could be you just sacrificed your past. You sacrificed this person. You're doing everything you can. You're getting nothing but good news with the Page of Wands. The good news could be unexpected income. Meanwhile, this man is behind you stuck in karmic cycles. 
Knight of Swords. A lot of things are changing in your life, but for the good. Yeah. A lot of fast changes are happening in your life, like back to back to back. It's like one new thing after another, but these are good things, right? One new thing after the other that's happening very, very fast. All because you took a leap of faith and realized that your past doesn't define you. What this man is saying doesn't define you. What the church people are saying about you doesn't define you. How society sees you doesn't define you. How they feel about you doesn't define you. None of it matters because you know at the end, all that really matters is your purpose in life and your faith in God. It doesn't matter. None of it matters. It's like these people talk about you so much. It's like, it's like as if their bills were being paid by them talking about you. Like if I, if my bills were getting paid by me talking about myself, shit, I would do the same thing, right? But queen of wands, that's you. You're walking in your power. You're very confident. You're very ambitious. You're very attractive. You're a go-getter. You're not letting any of this, any of this, your past, you're not letting it get to you. You're very confident. You're standing on your power. Those, there's also a cat here. I just noticed that. So we have the cat here and then the hanged man. You're very, and then we have the healing touch. You're very intuitive and you're, you're free. Like nothing with the past doesn't define you with your past doesn't define you in this cat being here. You're a free spirit. You know that nothing, you don't have to be bound by what people are saying about you. You know, God knows who you are. That's all that matters to you. You don't care about anything else. Knight of Wands. Um, on top of the Queen of Wands. You're very committed to moving forward in your life. You're very committed. You're committed to yourself, your spirituality, your freedom. You're in, not only, nothing's going to sway you from being a false person. The Three of Wands. Let's see what that is about. Let me get one for the Three of Wands. <sighs> I already know. We have the Strength. On top of the Heavens will shake. On top of Great Fortune in Reverse. Somebody is waiting for something. The strength on top of the heavens will shake in great fortune and reverse. This man finds strength in like money. Like money makes him feel powerful. And that's why we have the heavens will shake is because... He put more faith and loyalty into money. And God's like, you cannot do that. You cannot love me and money at the same time. Even in the Bible, the Bible says that you cannot love two masters at once. My <coughs> throat. This man found strength in what he could materially possess. And that made the heavens mad because you're not supposed to be like that. You're supposed to walk in this purpose with this person, but instead he decided to walk in like the path of like greed and money. And on top of that, he wants to blame his mother and sister because his mother and sister could be like money hungry people. Like they just love money. They, it's the, the statue, the status that money gives them. And because you look like you didn't come from money or the way you looked or whatever, you did not fit their, their image. So they really lost out on a divine partnership because they grew up with the mentality that money is more important than God. Like, that is really sad. So who's waiting? I don't see you waiting for anything because you're committed to making sure that your past doesn't define you. It's like you're committed to breaking down the barriers that the society, the world, the church, your friends, your family, your coworkers have put you under. You're committed to 
not keeping yourself trapped within those walls. So I don't see you waiting for anything because you're in the Queen of Wands energy. You're just nothing but action. And with the Knight of Wands, you're committed to these actions, right? This is all good, though. What is the Three of Wands, Justice? Hold on, I got to move this because now this is in my way. We have Justice on top of the Three of Wands. So who's waiting for Justice? No, it's not about waiting. It's about... It's Justice for you to have... A, a, a stable foundation, a long-term, long-term stable foundation. This is your justice. This is how it's supposed to be for you. But you have to get out of that view of like, um, I can't have this future because of my past or because of how I grew up or because they said this about me or because of I'm like this. You had to get out of that mindset and not, aside from what this man was doing, there's like two things. And this man was already doing this. And on top of that, you had to also not care about what this man was saying. Like, okay, so this man is saying this, this, and this about me, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to move beyond that. I'm going to move past that. I'm not going to let it hold me back. Because in reality, it's in your destiny, right? You are the gift. This person was just supposed to be, this person was just um, somebody that God had picked for you to partner up with, like in a divine partnership. But that doesn't mean that it was kind of like set in stone for all eternity. All right. What's set in stone for all eternity is for you to have a long-term stable foundation. That's like your divine justice. That's just how you were created to be. All right. It's like you were a favored one of God. And because God favored you, he was like, mm, I want her or I want him to just have a long-term stable foundation. And people are like, why, why, why? God's like, just because they're one of my favorites. That's all. All right, let me get um one more, two more, and then I'll call it because I'm already over an hour. Wow, Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. So it's justice for you to have a long-term stable foundation, um, to have like an abundance of finances, stability, confidence, ambition, freedom. Once you realize that nothing can hold you back, you're in this Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Wands energy. Like you're unstoppable at this point. Also, this man with the strength card, this man wants you to give him some of your strength. That's a side note. He wants you to give him some of his strength because the way he sees it as like, can I have some of your strength because I don't have money. I don't have great fortune, right? Great fortune reverse. So he needs some of your strength. Wheel of Fortune, yeah. This is what I've been talking about the entire time. This was meant to happen. This is divine justice. All right. This is this is something that has been set in stone. Not for this man. This man was just somebody that God picked to um, walk alongside of you and your path and your long-term stability, your queen of pentacles, queen of wands energy. It's like you needed a partner. Okay. God was like, okay, well, you look like you could be a good fit. I'm going to have you partner up with this this divine feminine, all right? Oh, but you didn't do the job that you were supposed to do. All right, that's not a problem. We're going to just remove you from the divine feminine's life, and we're going to put somebody else in, okay? Your path was supposed to be of this long-term stable foundation. Happiness, love, great fortune, unexpected income, healing, queen of pentacles, queen of wands energy, hanged man, the fool, page of wands, knight of swords. You, this, was, this was a path that was designed for you. But God just wanted you to have another player in your life just to keep you company. That's what it really is. It's just to keep you company along your, your chosen divine path, right? Because you were supposed to build an empire. 
This was your blood that you, that God chose you to build an empire. This man was technically, to be honest with you, he's irrelevant. He's not needed for you to build your empire because God can just bring you another divine masculine to build an empire. This was the star. This was supposed to be a divine masculine, but he fell because he gave into money and greed because his sister and his mom made him do it. His sister and his mom, they, they gave into greed. They need money. So he did not fulfill his purpose. And God was like, all right, not a problem. It's not like you, you're needed anyway. This man was not needed for you to build your empire. What was needed was for you to realize that you are who you are. You needed to walk into your power. So then God was like, all right, Corey, she's ready to walk into her power. Let's send her and somebody else. Because you, there is a reason why God chose you to build an empire. The masculine, the divine masculine, there is an abundance of divine masculines. There is, believe it or not, there is. This man was a divine masculine, he fell. God said, all right, get out. I'm going to call in another divine masculine for you to build this empire because there's an empire that you need to build. It's your blood. Your blood is, oh my God, that's another story. But so yeah, this is a reading. I hope it helps. If anybody needs a personal reading, you're more than welcome to email me. Also, I have two slots open for a free 10 minute reading for the month of March. All right. I have two more slots open. So just email me if you feel like you need a personal free 10 minute reading.